right, so let's remember this um, Poisson distribution that we discussed last time. Um, so here's where we're expecting customers to come in. Um, they're actually coming in on an exponential distribution and we get these Poisson probabilities. Um, so this was the probability that there are zero customers in a given length of time was e to the negative a, probability of one customer a times e to the negative a, and so on. And we notice these numbers are factorials and here's the general formula, probability of k customers in a given length of time is a to the k times e to the negative a over k factorial, where a is the expected number of customers, or the average number in that time. So remember when we did customers in a day, if we expect 50 customers in a day, for example, then this a value for all of these is 50, this makes sense. Uh, if we expect 50 customers in a day, the probability of zero customers should be very small, e to the negative 50. Um, all right. So this kind of distribution gives us a no memory property. What does that mean? That means that any time we can reset and uh, it's as if we're at the beginning. So let's say your store is open 24 hours and you expect 50 customers in eight hours. It doesn't matter if you had a very busy previous eight hours. Let's, let's say the distribution is always, um, it doesn't matter what time of day, which is maybe not realistic. Um, but that's what we're assuming here. Um, it doesn't matter if you had a very busy last eight hours, your next eight hours, you start from scratch. Um, so what does that mean in math? Like the probability, uh, for example, uh, let's look at the probability of um, T is time till next customer. And the probability that that time is greater than or equal to, let's say, 4, um, given probability time is greater than or equal to 0, which is always true. So we don't necessarily need to write that, but I'm setting that up for future notation. Um, okay, well, if we expect A customers in one unit of time interval, then this probability is going to be E to the negative 4A. Um, because in time four, you expect four A customers, so the probability of no customers, or probability of waiting at least four units of time till the next customer, it's going to be E to the negative four A. And the no memory property says that this is the same as, let's say, the probability that T is greater than or equal to seven, given that T is greater than or equal to three. Meaning, if we've waited three, let's say these are minutes, if we've waited three minutes and there are no customers, then the probability that we'll wait seven minutes is the same e to the negative 4a, which is the same as the probability that we started the day and waited four minutes for the next customer. And it doesn't matter. We can, we can go, um, you know, that's the same as the probability t is greater than or equal to 285, given that t is greater than or equal to 281, as long as that difference is four all these probabilities are the same. Um, let's see why that is graphically. Here's an exponential decay graph of our exponential distribution. And we're just gonna start at time zero, so we'll cut this part off. And then, uh, because it's a probability distribution area under this curve, as we go to infinity, it has to be one. Okay, now what's happening with this no memory property? Well, we're picking some length of time to start at now here and we're going to cut this off and then we'll blow this part of the graph up so stretch it out so that the area is one again because if we cut this off currently the area is not one and we're saying that that looks just like the original graph that makes sense given an exponential graph and it's realistic for customer waiting time most of the time um, you might do different chunks of the day for different rush hours and things, but simplistically it's realistic for customer waiting time. It's unrealistic for service. And here's an example that shows this. Why can we not use the no memory property to model service? Um, okay, let's say that we have three, we're in a bank, we have three tellers four customers. So we start out with this. We start out with each customer as add a teller, each of our first three, one, two, three, 
And then we have customer four waiting here. Okay. And we want to calculate the probability that customer four finishes last. The probability that all the rest of the people get served and get out before customer four does. And it seems like it might be high, right? Because these guys are already being serviced. But what does the no memory property say? Well, one of these customers is going to finish first and they're going to leave. Let's say it's customer two. Customer two leaves, customer four comes here, and then teller two is now help helping customer four. The no memory property says we start from scratch here. Now these three customers are being helped equally. So any three could with equal probability finish last or finish, yeah, finish last. So the probability a customer four finishes last is one third. We don't care about the guy who's going to finish first, but after that, all three can finish equally. Um, so the no memory property makes our math a lot easier because we didn't have to do anything here. Um, but maybe not realistic for service. So for service, we do a different distribution called the Erlang distribution. So we're getting rid of exponential distribution. We're doing, sorry, not S, Erlang distribution. And uh, there's a couple things. There's a rate parameter, R, and a shape parameter. K. Uh, K is a positive integer. And this gives us a complicated formula. F of t equals r times rt to the power of k minus 1, e to the negative rt over k minus 1 factorial. I don't know about you, but uh, complicated formulas for me turn, turn me off. Um, however, uh, we can just look at what's important here. R is a constant, some rate parameter. R to the k minus 1 is still a constant. Uh, k minus 1 factorial is a constant. Here's our original exponential distribution from before. And so the only new thing is this t to the k minus 1. And notice when k equals 1, then that's t to the 0, is, so it's just a constant. So when k equals 1, we have our regular old exponential distribution, which gives us our Poisson stats from before. And then when k is greater than 1, we start changing the shape of the graph. So let's look at what this shape is. Here's exponential distributions from before for different, uh, different amounts of stretch. And then here's k equals 1 is still the same as exponential. And for other values of k, we start changing the shape of the graph. And this more closely resembles service. For the customers, it was most likely that the customer shows up right now. And as we wait longer, it's less likely. For service, you're probably, if you get up to the bank teller, it's not the most likely that you're going to finish in zero time. It's most likely that they're going to take some. So k equals 2 would be taking this amount of time. Um, k equals 20 would be, you're not going to finish immediately, but you're pretty likely to finish later. Um, so you can see from those pictures why that's a more likely uh, model for service.